Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you live to the beginning of something brand new, the Primetime Rundown Zoom interview series. I'm Joey Jarzinka. We are welcomed. And we cannot thank Connor McGlynn, former FA Euro, USL League Two midfielder and one-time captain, and now currently USL championship and Hartford Athletics midfielder, Connor McGlynn. Connor, cannot thank you enough for joining us here in conjunction with your former squad, FA Euro, and, uh, and the Blackjack Media Networks. Cannot thank you enough for joining us here. And uh, how are you doing over there? Are you staying healthy, buddy? Yeah, good. Thank you for having me. No, I really appreciate it. You know, it's, it's definitely a tough time right now for everyone. But, you know, I think Hartford, especially, are doing a great job of just keeping the players in shape, keeping everyone healthy. So that's all that matters right now. Good. I'm so glad to hear that. And, uh, and, and again, you know, you're, uh, you, you, signed, you signed with, uh, with – the Hartford Athletic on March 12th, I believe. And that was right when um, just, I believe it was a day or even a few hours after uh, all of this became an of officially a pandemic. Tell me about how that, that all, that all worked out for you and, and knowing that the possibility of you debuting for the USL championship squad could be delayed potentially weeks, months, and who knows now po possibly looking like a year. Right. So, you know, it was a really long process. You know, I was training with them for a few weeks, still doing school as well. So it was definitely like a big, big mix up. But I was glad to sign before this all became a pandemic. But when we got the news that we couldn't train or play, it was really disappointing. I was supposed to actually play in the first game. So, I mean, that was a big, big disappointment. But, you know, there's a lot of positives that'll come. We're all working hard and keeping in contact with each other, which is great. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear that. And and you know what? Now now uh recapping recapping your time in college. Now this is a big thing. You're a senior and the saddest thing is that you can't walk and you can't really you you're not you're never well, I don't know if it never, but you're not going to see a lot of people that you saw on campus. Uh a lot of other, you know, your fellow athletes. Uh, a lot of the players that you played with um, for the men's soccer Sienna Saints team. Uh, first off, let's let's talk about your time in the NCAA. Talk about that. How how has that uh, shaped you to become the person that you are today? And just your your overall experience on the squad in uh, Loudonville. I mean, it was good. You know, I came from a great club at Kachi, and you know, I started out my college career there. And when I came to Siena, it was a big change. You know, Akachi, you know, we were mostly technical. We worked all technical, but I had yeah. to adjust to a more physical style play. But, you know, I had great coaches, great players that have helped me along the way, especially from Siena and then especially Agachi that have helped me um, through the college game. But, no, I've met some great people, got to play against some great teams. So, overall, it was a really positive experience. I'm really happy to hear that. And, and, you know, and, and we got to know each other at FA Euro and you've been playing there on the USL league two uh, side for about roughly, I believe it was th three or four years. I think, I think it's like three or four years that, yeah. It's three years. Like yep. That. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. And you know, time, time just flies like that, you know, and, uh, and, and from the time, you know, of uh, uh, at, at when, the FA Euro team would play at St. John's and then at Aviator and, and, and all obviously, you know, the, the, the stories, the, the, the stories that can be said, uh, you know, on the okay. road trips that we've taken together, you know, everything has, uh, you know, it, it all comes uh, full circle, but let's start, let's start from the beginning of your soccer career. Tell me about who, who really got you into playing soccer? Who, who do you look up to from, from soccer and not only that too if soccer was not the sport that you were destined to play what would have been the alternate the alternate career path for you so i'd probably say the person that got me really into soccer is my dad 100 percent. he's my role he, he, i look up to him every single day and i actually played basketball when i was growing up and like when i got to eighth grade you had to make that choice, but you know, it wasn't really a choice. I, I love soccer. I love every bit of it, but yeah, I'd probably say my dad's been my role model. Then growing up, I used to watch uh, Steven Gerrard. He, every time he stepped on the pitch, I just watched every movement that he made and it was amazing. So 
wanting to try to play like him was obviously the goal. So he's been a great role model as well as my dad, 100%. And what made you choose Siena too? When you came, when you came from uh, from beat from Gachi and and also your native Middle Village as well. So um, I actually, you know, I wasn't like that big of a recruit coming in, but uh, you know, I was small. I wasn't that big. You know, I didn't know how I adjust to a college game, but uh, the coaches at Siena, they had faith in me. They had faith that they could develop me into a more physical player, and you know, they gave me that opportunity and. I took it right from the get-go. I was able to play my freshman year all throughout senior year. So I knew going into it how much work I had to put in, and I was happy to choose Siena, ultimately. Now, you've, you've won numerous awards, academic awards. You've won All-Mac first team, second team. The, the, list, the list just grows. And for you to win all of these awards between – between uh at Siena and then also you within the USL League 2 where you were also on the watch list uh for top 100 midfielders in the entire nation and now you are just the sec actually the third FA Euro alum to make that leap in the path to pro as um as the uh, as the slogan says uh from the United Soccer League and uh, Sebastian Genzetti, Leo Fola, and now Connor McGlynn. Talk about what being on the list of a big three means to you from a squad that you basically grew up on. I mean, it means the world, you know. Like you said, you mentioned Leo Fola. I had the opportunity to play with him, but, you know, it was just the coaches that backed me, you know, Joe and Marco and the whole club were backing me which was awesome to see. And I think I've truly like developed there from the summer going into my college season. You know, just to be on that list means the world, but you know, the work doesn't stop there. The work's only just begun. So I'm really excited to, you know, hopefully get back into it as soon as possible. So now, so, so now you speak about that and this is the first time that we obviously we may not, like I said earlier, we may not see soccer at all this summer. We may not see anything this summer. Um, let alone for the rest of the year. Um, let's go back to when you're at Siena and when you're taking classes and everything. We, we spoke earlier about how weird it was um, not to be walking. How is your, your studies been online? Is it, is it weird right now to finish up college? Um, you know, your home, there's, everything is just different and thrown at you uh, involuntarily. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm not taking a lot of classes. You know, it's my, my last semester. You know, I tried right. to keep it, you know, as light as possible. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I know, I know some students are really struggling with their transition and, you know, the professors are as well. They have to learn a whole new style of teaching. But the one thing that my school has said is that they're trying to tentatively plan a, like a graduation walk sometime in late August. But you know, that we'll see about that. But for as for online learning, it's definitely difficult for a lot of students, including myself sometimes. So would you would you go up there to walk in August if uh, if you were given the opportunity? Not if we have a game of practice. No, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like I like that. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, you know what? That's and uh, and and you don't think uh, you don't think your coaches would allow you to uh, to do that, or you would just uh, shake it off and just say, "No, I'm good," and just take the diploma. I think I would just take the diploma. You know, I think I'm at a totally different card for to really professional. You know, they take every session seriously, everything that we do on and off the field seriously. So, you know, you got to sacrifice some things for that. So now, now looking at the Hartford Athletic, they are, they are in their second year um, in the USL championship. And they're also, they also have a brand new, let's call it building. I, I took a peek at it and it's a, um, it's, it was on a, on a park ground and, uh, and now it's going to be about 3000 people, I believe is the capacity. Uh, speak about playing in a, uh, in, in a stadium that is for your team and not playing uh, for a team that has to play on someone else's field or turf. Oh, it's amazing. You know, it gives us really that, that home atmosphere. You know, you don't want to really be playing on someone else's field where you're just sharing it with everyone. But 
you know, the stadium gives us like that own identity, that own just way of just, you know, training and living. So, I mean, we've been there a few times. We have our own training ground as well, which is amazing, you know, but I'm really excited to get on the pitch and actually play home fans because they've been amazing so far. They've been supportive and we love them. And now you look to, and this is, and this is a question that I've been looking to ask you for a very long time. And I think you and I have spoken about this a couple of years ago. And, and I, when I heard it, I, I was, I, I couldn't believe it. And I thought it was, I didn't know you were related. And then I realized I put two and two together. Your brother, Jack, uh, he, he signed a contract, uh, first professional contract with the, uh, with the Philadelphia union too. And he played, um, on the U14 U U.S. national team. That is something absolutely surreal. Talk to me about if the season were to resume and you could potentially be playing against your brother a total of three times this season. Talk about that and what it would be like, not only for you, but also for your brother, your parents, and your extended family. Who does your family root for? <laughs> so, um, you know, we were actually fortunate enough to play Philadelphia Union 2 in a pre- and my mom was able to go and, you know, it was definitely emotional for all of us. We ended up winning 3-1, so that was pretty nice. And <laughs> yeah. We're hopefully planning on beating them three more times this season. But, no, I mean, for me, stepping on the same field as him was probably one of the emotional moments of my life, seeing, you know, how hard he's worked to reach the the level that he has at such a young age you know it's it's inspiring for all young players and you know he's someone even though I'm five years older than him I still look up to him. like our whole family is so proud of him and you know he's 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 really worked for it and it's, it's it's just an amazing experience so far and to play against him hopefully three more times this season would be unbelievable and not only that too you know the the, the trajectory of the McGlynn brothers is you guys, it's, it's a matter of time before you guys make that leap to, to the MLS level. And I know, and, and I, and I know you're, I know you for the last, like I said, for the last three, three or three and a half years. And I know that you put insane amounts of work in, you're going to get to where you want to go. And it's just, it, it's amazing to see that, you know, you're wearing the Hartford Athletic sweatshirt right now. I'm really happy for you. Really proud of you as well, but uh, I'm not letting you go yet. But, uh, but the biggest thing now that I have for you, the biggest thing that I now have for you is, is that were there any tips that your brother gave you maybe in the last, in, you know, ever since you signed the deal uh, or signed the contract rather, uh, or even before that, because, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, downplaying the fact that, um, that he was on a USL championship team before his older brother. Um, but did you take any advice from him or did he give you any tips about, you know, moving up to that next level um, and playing now on the biggest stage of your life right now? Yeah. So he had an opportunity down in Brazil to really showcase his talent with the Philadelphia union too. And, you know, we would talk on the phone basically every day and he's like, listen, when you're in Hartford, you got to prove why you're there. You have to, to prove every day why you belong on that team and why they should sign you. So you have to literally work harder than everyone else day in, day out to show that the manager that you're, you're worth signing. So he told me that. And then, you know, a few weeks later, he got that opportunity and they signed him. And then a few weeks after, you know, I just kept working and working and I was fortunate enough to get signed. So that was probably the, the best bit of it gave me. So, that's and and really really again unbelievable to hear to hear that the McGlynn brothers in USL championship and now they're going to be playing against one another hashtag path to pro for those USL league two followers that are listening it really is possible dreams do come true look at my man Connor McGlynn right now it is happening look at the crest on his sweater it really can happen and it can happen to anybody uh, Connor, keeping it moving here. Um, I want to talk about Sienna because I'm sure that, uh, we do have a few Sienna, um, folks watching, um, upstate in upstate New York. Um, just to get a, um, a bit of, I guess, a feeling, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of the student athletes right now who've played spring sports, 
Um, how hard is it, do you think, and would you be able to even imagine what some of these um, spring sports student athletes are going through where unfortunately their season was cut short involuntarily and thankfully they're getting another year of um, eligibility. But what's your take on that? I mean, I think another year of eligibility is, you know, it's amazing for athletes who, you know, say if you play a sport and you're, you know, it's a great opportunity for you to showcase your talent and, you know, hopefully try and get to that next level. You know, I've talked to a few people on the phone who've played spring sports and they're absolutely gutted. And I know personally, I would be if I like our season got canceled, you know, you wait all year for it and, you know, you have three or four months to really showcase your talent and try and win a championship. And when that's all taken away from you from something that you, you can't really control, it's heartbreaking. So I completely understand, you know, why they, they're they trying to push for an extra year of eligibility. That would be amazing for these athletes that are really trying to get to that next level. Now, do you have, and, and this is, this is a, a, a true, honest question for you. Do you have any friends who played winter sports that were affected by this? Yeah, I have, a, I have a few friends on the basketball team, actually, and they did extremely well this year, extremely, right. extremely well. They actually, you know, they were projected to, to win our tournament, but they actually gave them the championship, which was amazing. You know, they have some guys that are unbelievable, and they completely deserved it. But obviously, they didn't get to finish out the conference tournament, but they gave them the championship, which, you know, they were expected to win. So I definitely do feel for the other teams, but I'm glad that Siena, you know, got, got the championship. Now, with uh, and again, just to just to finalize with Sienna, though, your what is your your departing message to to your now future alma mater in roughly about let's say I believe it's about a month and a half I would say would be would have been commencement. What's your message to the to the freshmen, to the sophomores, to the juniors that? They looked up to you. You were the veteran on the team this past year. How crazy! First off, how crazy is that? That you are going to be graduating, and I know, and I know, I keep repeating myself with this, but now you have to think to yourself: you're the adult here. What do these guys? What do you? What do these guys think of you? Or what do you think they think of you? Or what do you want them to think uh, about Connor McGlynn as he departs from Siena? I mean, every day, you know, on the field, off the field, I just try to be a role model. You know, I'll stay after practice for however long to help out the young guys and things that they need to work on. You know, there's always things in my game that I need to work on. So I'm trying to stay after practice and work on my weaknesses. So I'd probably say my message to those guys is, you know, obviously improve your strengths, but really focus on your weaknesses. Because once you focus on your weaknesses and work on them and work on them, you're only improving yourself and you're improving the team. So that's why I always tell the young guys on our team. And by the time they get to senior year, they'll be peaking. So that's just probably my message that I would give them. That's good. I'm really glad to hear that. And then hopefully they'll be able to take your, uh, your words of advice and hopefully uh, convert that onto the field for some goals, for some wins. Um, now, while you're in, while you're stuck in quarantine, obviously, um, you know, thankfully you and your entire family are healthy, as you did say in the beginning uh, of the episode, but what, have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Because I could tell you right now, it's been brutal for me and for you. I'm sure you want to definitely get back to the pitch, but you know, now, unfortunately, where you are, things are just closing left and right. Well, how, how have you been keeping yourself busy? So, um, Hartford gave us like specific conditioning runs to do, okay. uh, basically like three times a week. And we also, our trainer, Lucas Cruel, who's unbelievable. He does a training session from Zoom at 10 a.m. every uh, every morning, which, you know, it really pushes you to the limit. It's like 30 to 45 minutes. But, you know, it really takes your mind off things. And, you know, I'm really enjoying it so far. And then there's other ways of fitness that we, we try and, like, incorporate. And it's good that I have my brother home to train with bit as well. So we're really trying to push each other to become better, like, during this time, this downtime. Have you it's not really downtime, though. It's a yeah. good time. I, I was actually going to say that, say my next question was, was that have you guys butted heads yet that you guys now are, you, you've been home for the last, so it's going to be three, three or three weeks to close to a month now. Have you and the family, you know, butted heads? You're, I don't know if you guys have been 
you know, for, for a really long time, uh, you know, been home together for, you know, this is, <laughs> this is, like I said, three weeks and at a time where you really can't go out, there's nothing to do. Yeah, I mean, that's always going to be a, something that goes on. You know, we drive each other crazy, but in the end, we all love each other. It's good to just have us all home for a little bit. And, you know, hopefully this this clears up faster than we know it. So, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, it's, you know, I'm, and I'm sure that's obviously what we're all thinking. And we'll see, uh, hopefully the, uh, you know, we'll be flattening the curve here in uh, in New York for sure. Um, now I, I do want to, I do want to speak about FA Euro because I know that they're watching and, um, a lot of them are watching. I, I spoke to, uh, to Joe and to, uh, and to Marco earlier. They're, uh, they're really happy that we're doing this. Um, but speak about your time with them and not only that, but how you were, how you found FA Euro. I don't even know that story actually. Yeah. So, you know. So our coach at Siena Caesar was able to hook me up with Joe and since then I've never really turned back you know I've I've had nothing but good experiences with FA Euro I've been able to grow and develop as a player and you know I feel like the club is definitely going the right direction with those guys you know they really work night and day to really make FA Euro better and you know it's unfortunate that we can only play in the summer you know I'm always like Every time like the season ends, like I miss it. It's like I want to go back. You know, I'm I'll always be appreciative for those guys and all the hard work that they put in day in day out to try and make the team better in any way that they can. So, I really thank them for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know what? It's it it's been it's been crazy because you know you and I have you say you and I got there together basically, and now we left at the same time as mm -hmm. well. And what we've both taken from them is really, you know, unbelievable. Um, you know, what we learn on the pitch, off the pitch, um, even in, in, even in regular life as well. Um, I want, I do want to talk about last season though. And last season during the summer, um, when your, your final appearance was actually an ejection at ocean city. And um, did you think that that was going to be, your last appearance for FA Euro? No, not at all. You know, it was definitely unfortunate. You know, I completely enjoyed my season and my game at Ocean City was definitely a killer for me and the team. You know, we let the team down that game. I'll outright admit it, but um, yeah, I still think about it sometimes. I, I wish I can go back and change it, but you know, I appreciated everything that happened this season. You know, I learned a lot. Hopefully, my team did a lot as well before going back to college or wherever they ended up going. So, yeah, it was definitely an unfortunate way to go out. But, you know, I took a lot of positives from the season. So, you – you, I'm, I'm going to – we're going we're gonna to conclude the interview with a, few, with a few basic questions. And I call this like a five to gotcha. seven question type, uh, you know, type questionnaire thing to conclude this. And the biggest thing that I have here is this is, at, and it's not really, uh, you know, a one through five, you know, one is the highest. This is just random, random order. But I'm going to start with this question first. And, <clears throat> excuse me, while you were with Sienna and FA Euro, how did the, how did playing with your respective teammates, how did it, how was it fun? How, how did it, how did they make your experience at both, uh, both at FA Euro and Siena fun? I'd probably say, you know, like my first year at Siena and my first year at FA Euro, you know, I had guys who were older on the team, you know, being really inviting, you know, showing me, you know, the proper way that they do things at both respective FA Euro and Siena. So I think just guys who are older leading by example really, you know, showed me the way and just made me feel comfortable and confident. And I think that's carried through through my years at Siena and FA Euro. And then another, this is, this is completely way out there, but I'm still going to ask you anyway. And you know, and you know me, I'm, I'm wild and crazy as you know, but your, what is your favorite sports movie for soccer? For soccer? <laughs> that's a tough one. I want to say goal. But I'd probably, I'd probably have to say Kicking and Screaming, 100%. That movie's hilarious. 
Kicking now, and screaming with Will Ferrell. Oh, <laughs> I have watch it all day. I have not seen that movie in a hot minute, but yeah, that's. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. It's a classic. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a, a good one for sure. Now, how about your your overall uh, favorite sports movie? Oh, overall. Oh man. I'd probably have to say the miracle, the hockey movie. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, they just put it on Netflix. I just decided to watch it. It's really good. I love it. Definitely That's inspiring. Great. Yeah, and now I remember in and, and the last in the last few years when we were with FA Euro, obviously I would always be the one to provide the uh, the uh, the music or the um, you know the music or the warm up songs or whatever you guys you know whatever you guys do. And I remember. Uh, I believe your your warm up warm up song for the last three years was oh my god what was it by Lil Wayne oh god uh I can't I can't remember I can't remember you 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 know exactly what I'm talking about it's probably right above it by Lil yeah. Wayne I th- it, might, it might have been I don't remember exactly but does that is what is your number one warm up song between Sienna, but really all your life, what is the one, the one song that really gets the blood boiling and gets the adrenaline pumping? I, I have to think about this one, but I definitely say like, it's pretty low key, but I listen to Lose Yourself by Eminem before every single game. I don't like, I don't know. I just, I think that song is just really inspiring. It's just, you know, you only have one opportunity, so. It's true. Yeah, and don't let it slip. So I, I think about that before every game. So I think it's an inspiring song. That's true. Absolutely. Um, now, what motivates you the most um, about your profession as an athlete? I'd probably say just getting better day in, day out. You know, I'm young. I'm 21 years old. I think I came to a club at Athletic where I have a coaching staff who's willing to teach me day in day out you know new things you know they've definitely opened up my eyes to see like new things on and off the field so I'm really excited to just keep learning that that's what it's all about just learning and growth and trying to reach that next level eventually and to conclude with the final two here um I think I did ask you this earlier but just to repeat to those uh who either are just joining us or um or who joined us late um, if not soccer, what would it have been? Oh, basketball, hundred percent. I loved basketball growing up, but I was I was really short right. growing up, and it just didn't work out. But I also, soccer was just way up there for me. Now, looking for looking at it from the from the non sports perspective, what would it have been if it weren't sports at all? Um, I've always wanted to work in a forensic lab. You know, I, I'm really interested in forensic science. So that was my goal growing up as a kid. But, you know, I knew soccer was just the only thing that was for me. So I'm really excited to be where I am right now. Well, that's, uh, that's really, really unbelievable. And, and just, to, just to conclude here, one final thing, Connor. I cannot thank you enough for joining me here on the Primetime Rundown, episode number one, being – the first ever guest on my Zoom interview series. And I, I, I love you, buddy. I'm really happy for you. And I, I, I'm really sad that I won't be seeing you this summer. Um, but I really wish you the best. Uh, congratulations on your upcoming graduation. And, uh, and I have to make it up to Hartford uh, at some point because, uh, you know, Crazy Joey, he has, he has to come up and see Conor McGlynn at some point. There's, there's no, there's, there's no <laughs> Absolutely. 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 Absolutely, man. So cannot thank everybody enough for tuning in. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Sienna Saints, USL Championships, Hartford Athletic, and FA Euro New York USL League Two alum, Connor McGlynn. Connor, thank you very much. And uh, just for those also, uh, on this coming Thursday, we'll have our second episode with WSJU St. John's University Radio Network's Kevin Connolly will be with us right here on the Eastern Observer. For more information, please log on to the easternobserver.com and we'll see you all on thursday connor once again thank you very much and good night all we'll see you on thursday afternoon